Huh. What's this? Oh, wow. Pokemon. I haven't played this in years. You know, I remember when this came out. I was right in the front lines. I... I... Go! 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 We gotta go! Oh, God! They're different but the same! Carl, come on. You can't stay here. You'll get pinned down. You can't catch them all. You can't catch them all. You need more than one game. God damn it, soldier. Get your ass in gear. We gotta... Trading cards, 12 o'clock. Freely, give me some return fire on those damn collectibles. We're getting slaughtered down here. <laughs> Porter! Oh, God, Porter's down. Someone get me some allowance money. Just one more booster pack. Leave it, Porter. But I might get a shiny. Leave it, Porter. You know they're nothing except energy cards and Professor Oaks. Oh, God, anime incoming! Yeah. Start. Back when I was little, Pokemon came crashing into the United States. We were not ready for the madness that would take hold of us. Playing cards, a TV show, toys, Pokedexes, comics, and the monster of them all, the video games. Growing up, my parents had no idea what video games were and didn't like that I would forego playing outside to stay in my room, playing on a miniature screen for hours. They also didn't buy into fads. So when Pokemon started to really kick off, they humored me by buying a starter pack of trading cards and bought me Pokemon Red, and then refused to get me anything else. So while the rest of my friends showed off their shiny Charizards and their toys, I only had enough to relate, but not fully engage. Looking back, I wasn't missing out on much, so kudos to my folks, but I've always been haunted by that stupid Pokedex. So today, we're going to answer what childhood me always wondered. Can you complete the Pokedex with only one game? Now, before we even start, don't worry. I know that in order to catch every Pokemon, you'd have to trade with the other games, as well as spend hours upon hours of training up each one and evolving it properly. I don't have time for that. So, rather than try to catch them all, we're going to try and see them all. I don't want to be the very best, like no one ever was. I'm perfectly content being second best. Hell, I'd take top 10. Time for the rules. First, for the sake of this run, we're going to assume that I'm back in my childhood, with no connector cable to speak of and no way of getting a new game. You only get one. I'm going to choose Pokemon Yellow because it's generally considered to be the special edition of the generation. I don't know what that means, but I can only hope that means it's a combination of red and blue. Second, the goal is to see every single Pokemon. All 151. Third, if the Pokemon pops up in the Pokedex, it counts. That means that wild Pokemon, enemy trainers, and info cards that the game throws at us all count as an entry completion. And that's it. Something tells me this is going to be a long one, so let's get started, shall we? Turning on this hunk of plastic, the first thing I notice is that the game is in color. It's almost disorienting, to be honest. All the memories I have of these games are from a chunky Game Boy that only used various shades of black. Aww, look how cute that boy is. If there's any real reason I wanted to do this challenge, it's definitely because of the designs of all the Pokemon. They just stick out in your mind. Really great stuff. Ah! Gah! I take it back. Hellspawn! Hellspawn! I'd go over the plot, but let's be honest, we all know the story. I create Lemon, the ten-year-old boy who never goes outside and whose mom has decided enough is enough and locked us out of the house until we learn to play with the other kids. Professor Oak does his thing, we name our rival something completely original and inspired, and we get this party started. Oak gives us one look, realizes we're probably going to have an asthma attack just from walking through the grass outside of town, and tells us to go take pictures of all the Pokemon. He'll let his grandson catch them all. Appropriately, the very first Pokemon that's going to be entered in our Pokedex is Pikachu. I'm not giving it a nickname, though. Then enough Nuzlocks to know that that's a bad idea. After Ass acts like an ass, and steals our first Pokemon, we kick his ass and add Eevee to our list. In order to keep the story rolling, we need to head to the first town, so let's do that. But first, a trip to Mom's house. Yes, Pikachu, we still live with her mom. Don't look at me like that. On the way, we see some Pidgey and Rattata on Route 1. I'm pretty sure that's all that spawns here. We grab the parcel up in Viridian City, make our way back to Oak, and get our Pokedex, allowing us to keep a closer track of what we've seen. Helpful, that. Side note. Sorry the tracker on the right doesn't update in real time. I designed it myself, so I didn't want to keep jumping back and forth. Essentially, it'll update whenever we finish an area, or whenever we hit a significant milestone. I don't know. I like it. More than just the word seen and a number like the Pokedex has. Let me know if it's working for you. I'd like to hear your thoughts. In any case, let's move forward. Before going north, we head over to Route 22 and find ourselves a Spearow, a Mankey, a female Nidoran, and a male Nidoran. Not a bad haul. Then, moving north, we head into Viridian Forest to find us some bugs. We trip over a few Caterpie and Metapod, but nothing else. I could have sworn I remember getting poisoned repeatedly in this forest. 
They must have changed that for Pokemon Yellow. We find a few trainers throughout the forest as well, but they don't offer us anything we haven't already seen. Because the next gym is the Ground and Rock Gym, we're going to need something other than Pikachu. We catch a Caterpie out of desperation, evolve it into Metapod, and then evolve it one more time into Butterfree. Now our baby caterpillar is a beautiful psychic butterfly. That sounds like something out of a horror movie. Anyway, let's push on to Pewter City. The thing I love about Gen 1 is that they had no idea how to balance the game. Psychic Pokemon are completely broken, and because of that, what should be a delicate butterfly is actually a complete and total powerhouse. Look at this beast! I mean seriously, look at this! After a little grinding, we go after the gym. The trainer here has a Diglett and a Sandshrew, and Brock himself has a Geodude and an Onix. After his gigantic rock snake gets completely trashed by our badass butterfly, we update our totals and move along to Route 3. The multitude of trainers on this route have plenty of new Pokemon for us. There's Weedle, Atkins, Kakuna, and Jigglypuff. We also buy a Magikarp for 500 bucks, because why the hell not? This brings our total up to 20. Good stuff so far. On to Mount Moon. Immediately upon entering, we're attacked by a Zubat. If memory serves, this place is lousy with the damn things, so it's a good thing our Butterfree can kill them in one hit like everything else. Isn't that right, little but- Oh Jesus, alright! Between the wild Pokemon and trainers, we see a Clefairy, Magnemite, Voltorb, Paris, Oddish, Bellsprout, Grimer, Coughing, and Meowth. That puts us at a solid 30. One fifth of the way there. While in Cerulean, we hear about Bill, who is all about the Eeveelutions. He's going to help us never need to bother with Eevee ever again, so let's head on up that way. Before we go, though, we talk to a police officer who tells us that we can't move forward because they're investigating a break-in. It's probably Team Rocket! Yep, sure does look that way, doesn't it? Before we get up to Bill, Ass comes rolling down the lane. Unfortunately for him, our Butterfree is a goddamn powerhouse. Look at this. Look at it! It's a travesty. All I did was put his entire team to sleep and give them nightmares. This game is weird. Anyway, let's push through to Route 24 and 25. Not a single new Pokemon through the entire Nugget Bridge, even with the Rocket Grunt. Do these kids know they're essentially in the Rocket Youth? Should we tell them? Where are the adults? Continuing past them, some guy gives us a Charmander. Alright, better me than the farm, I guess. The rest of Route 25 doesn't have much, just a Machop and a Slowpoke. Oh, and this weird kid screaming about his girlfriend. I don't care about your waifu, man, I just want to see some Pokemon. Reaching Bill's house, we go through the whole song and dance of turning him back into a human being. Again, is it is it just me? Am I the only one that sees the horrifying undertones of this game? Where are the adults? This kid just the flied himself, and we're gonna pretend it never happened? Look, my Pikachu has anxiety now. It's just standing there shell-shocked. Might as well get something out of this. We pop onto Bill's computer, and shamefully glimpse through his fetish pictures to collect Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon. I feel dirty. And what better way to clean off than the water gym? Segway, 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 and we're here. Lots of new Pokemon to see here since we're afraid of water and haven't set foot in H2O since we started. Battling all these trainers, we find a Horsey, Shelder, Goldeen, Staryu, and Starmie. Oh, also, we fought the Team Rocket guy that broke into the house. Don't mind me, officer, just a ten-year-old kid doing your job. Where are the adult- He is a drowsy. With all that said and done, our new total is now 42. Heading down to Route 5, we find ourselves a Pidgeotto, and the object of my desires, an Abra. This little monster is going to make the battles of this game a cakewalk, letting me focus more on seeing things and less on strategy. I accept. Pushing through to Route 6, we see a Weepin' Bell, Cubone, and Raticate. Question. What's with all these trainers that only have multiples of one type of Pokemon? Are Pokemon essentially like pets? Like, do you have Pidgeys because you only like birds and you aren't really a Growlithe person? I mean, it, I, I guess it makes sense if you overthink it. Ah, oh, that's cute. I will say, as much as I don't want to get attached to Pikachu, his little animations are really doing it for me. After rolling through Diglett Cave a bit with no luck of finding a wild Dugtrio, our Abra evolves into Kadabra and finally learns an actual move. Just outside of Diglett Cave though, we find some kid willing to trade for a Mr. Mime. It's a little early, and I probably should have evolved my Clefairy to see Clefable first, but uh, hey, I might use Mr. Mime, you never know- Oh, god, I've, I've made a mistake. Before we tackle the SSN, we run through Route 11. Plenty of new Pokemon here. We see a Poliwag, Nidorino, Growlithe, Vulpix, and Magneton. We're officially over one-third of the way done at 54 Pokemon seen. On the SSN, we act like a protagonist and barge into random people's rooms. Only one person actually seems upset about this. He yelled at me for coming in and then screamed at me to leave once my Pokemon beat up his. We even beat up some old man who says his Pokemon are his only friends. Oh my god, are we the ass? In any case, after all our breaking and entering, we can add Tentacle, Snorlax, and Ponyta to our list. We also bump into Ass, who still doesn't have any new Pokemon for us. Come on, man, help a guy out. We give the captain a back rub that sounds oddly sensual, 
Yes, everyone makes that joke, but we're only playing this game once, so we gotta do it. And disembark. I think all that breaking and entering happened on international waters. The police don't seem to care that much. Actually, the police don't seem to care about anything. Should we be concerned? Where are the parents? Electric gym time. I hate to say it, but there's nothing but a Raichu here. Bummer. Usually the gyms have more to offer than that. Yeah, at least we can pick up a Squirtle. Heading back north, we cut our way into Route 9. Oh my god, he even has a little panic animation when he's separated from us. Just want to squeeze him and hold him and... Nope, nope, stop. Don't get attached. On Route 9, we see a Beedrill and a Venonat, but that's about it. Before we can move into the dark, scary cave, we're going to want the Flash HM. Normally, I'd just flounder my way through the darkness, but a majority of our Pokemon sightings come from trainer battles, which we might miss if I can't see them. So, it's all the way back to the outskirts of Pewter City to go get HM05. Now that we can see, we're free to roam about the cave without concern. We find ourselves a Bulbasaur and a Graveler, but that's about it. That's disappointing. I went out of my way for that? Did that kid just ask if he could have my Pokedex when I've completed it? No. No. Who do you- No! God, the nerve of some people. And now I've got this girl claiming that I'm up to something. What? I'm ten! What is wrong with you people? Before we explore Creepy Pasta Lavender Town, we're gonna go west to Route 7, where we'll see a Muck, a Nidorina, and a Poliwhirl, putting our total at 66. Eh, close enough to 666. Let's go to Spooksville. Blissfully ignoring all the implications this tower brings, we bump into Ass. Finally has something new. A Fero. But that's it. Oh, right. I need a self-scope. Alright, I guess we were too early. Let's go back to searching the map. Running down to Route 12, we battle a few trainers, but see nothing new before bumping into Snorlax. So, I guess it's time to explore Saldan City. First we... steal... an Eevee. My god, we are an ass. Wait, are we sure there's another ten-year-old boy? Has anyone checked that this isn't some sort of fight club scenario? Are you sure? Alright, just... Look, I haven't been sleeping much, and I've been using a lot of soap lately, so I just... We bump into an old lady who tells us how much Pikachu loves me. <laughs> as well as the game devs who only want to talk about their favorite waifus. The lead developer says I can have a diploma if I come back with a full Pokedex. Holding you to that one, bub. After all that nonsense, we start to tackle the Rocket game corner. This is Team Rocket we're talking about, though, so they don't have that many new Pokemon. I swear, owning a Zubat and a Rattata must be the rite of passage or something. I think they only get a coughing after two years of service. I don't know. After going through all the puzzles and fighting every single trainer, they still haven't shown me a new Pokemon. The only person in this whole hideout that has anything new is Giovanni, who at least has a Rhyhorn and a Persian. God, you guys are the worst gangsters ever. With the silk scope in hand and some water bottles to boot, we head on down to the gym. Hello, pervy grandpa. How are you doing? Not a whole lot of new Pokemon here, just an Execute, Gloom, Ivysaur, and a Tangela. I think we're starting to get to that point in the game where we might have to start evolving Pokemon in order to add them to the Pokedex. I really don't like grinding, so we'll keep pushing, but I'm kind of getting worried about that one. Anyway, on to the Ghost Tower, where we see plenty of Ghastlies, Haunters, and even a Marowak, which the game implies are extinct. Q-Wounds are everywhere, how are Marowaks extinct? Is there some special requirement for them to evolve? You know what? No, it's not worth it. Jesse and James show up at the top of the tower and show us an Arbok and a Weezing, so they're finally pulling their weight. And after we get Mr. Fuji out of the tower, our total has finally jumped to just over 50% done. We wake up Snorlax with Fuji's Poke Flute, and... What do you mean I missed? It's right there! And I was just kidding about that whole asthma backstory, you don't have to make it a reality. Zooming through routes 13, 14, and 15, we see an Electrode, Farfetch'd, Doduo, Wigglytuff, and Dodrio. That's a pretty good haul. After that, we make it to Fuchsia City. Between the gym, the Pokemon Zoo, and the Safari Zone, this city is going to be the mother load of Pokemon entries, so prepare yourself. <sighs> Hypno, Sandslash, Venomoth, Chansey, Lapras, Ammonite, wait, really? Glad I didn't pick that fossil then. Kangaskhan, Parasect, and Tauros. There's definitely more out there, but I think that's enough for now. Thanks, buddy. So, with all that said and done, we're sitting pretty at 92 Pokemon. Heading south, we're about to encounter a bunch of water Pokemon we've been missing. Battling with trainers in Undertow, we find a Seeking, Tentacruel, Seedra, and Cloyster. Considering how many jellyfish I ran into on my swim over here from the Seafoam Islands, None of these trainers should be swimming in this water. I at least have the excuse that I'm riding on a Pokemon. That's the equivalent of a boat in this world, apparently. These bozos are swimming in straight-up angry jellyfish. I'm not even guessing at their temperament, either. Look at this thing. It's got a resting bitch face. That thing definitely stings on sight. Anyway, we decide to continue our risky behavior with some cave diving. Inside the seafoam caves, we find Krabby, a Golbat, Seal, Dugong, Kingler, oh, and a legendary bird. 
NBD, I'm just some 10 year old kid who fell down a couple cave holes, got dragged away by a water current, and found himself face to face with a legendary god monster! Serious question, how did any of us grow up to be normal? Obviously I wanted this monstrosity in my party, but I had the same problem I've had with the other enormous Pokemon in this world. And for some reason, I can't hit the damn thing with a Pokeball. Eh, eh. After a shameful display of athleticism, it decides it's had enough of my flailing and annihilates me and my team. Oh, shut up, you. Well, no one said I had to actually catch Articuno, so I guess that counts enough for my standards. After that traumatizing ordeal, we've got 102 Pokemon seen and only 49 left to go. When we finally make it to Cinnabar Island, we trade our fossil to a very reputable sounding scientist who says he can turn it into a Pokemon. Then he yells at us to go for a walk. Alright then. Well, the gym here isn't open. Guess it's a weekend. So we do the next logical thing and decide to break and enter into an abandoned building. You know, like the other well-adjusted ten-year-olds do. Turns out this entire building is full of thieves who've got some Pokemon I need. I see a Charmeleon, Ninetales, and the key to the gym on the basement floor. That's weird. Oh, also, there are journals lying all around the place confirming that this is in fact Earth that we're running around on, since they mentioned South America. I mean, Lieutenant Surge was a pretty big hint, but this cinches it. With this key, we open the gym doors and- Really? You were all just sitting in here? I knocked multiple times! None of you could walk ten feet to open the door? Even you, fan club guy? You're dead to me. I mean, you were never really significant to me to begin with, but now! Anyway, turns out the gym is full of weirdos. They want me to answer quizzes before they'll decide whether or not they can be bothered to battle me. I try to intentionally get the questions wrong so that I can make sure to see all of their Pokemon, but whoever wrote these questions was either not a primary English speaker, or else all the QA department was asleep at the wheel. Because I know for a fact that Caterpie does not evolve into Butterfree. It evolves into Metapod. Despite my attempts to fail every test, I accidentally passed a few, but we still got to see a Rapidash, and the bestest boy, our canine. Look at that good boy. I want one. I won't get one, but I want one! I'm done with this wacky island, get me out of here. Heading north, I bump into War Turtle, but that's about it. Oh, I'm back home. Huh. Alright, well, we stop at home to let Mom know she can call off the Amber Alert, and that we're doing okay. But she doesn't even seem the least bit concerned. Well, I guess I'll keep adventuring then, that's fine. I take the Diglett Cave shortcut, but actually bump into a Doug Trio this time around, so that's one less place I'll need to revisit. Heading north to Psychic Town, I decide to tackle the Fighting Dojo before we do anything else. There's a Primeape here, a Machoke, a Hitmonlee, and a Hitmonchan. I steal one of their Pokemon because I can, and then move on with the solid 112 Pokemon scene. Before we go any further, I steal a bike, because otherwise we can't visit the bike route. Then, immediately following our crime, we break into a secret crime hideout to see if we can join. Uh, I, I mean break it up. As per usual, Team Rocket requirements state that all members have a rat and or bat Pokemon, which might cause some issues with our joining. Oh well. Did that rocket just mention Russia? Alrighty then. Huh. This guy makes a good point. Are all the adults that I'm destroying just really bad at this because training Pokemon is the new hotness? Is training Pokemon only available to the well-off? I swear, the dialogue in this game begs more questions than answers. Either that or I'm looking way too hard to this game made for children. In any case, there isn't a single new Pokemon among all these grunts. Not one. What a waste of time. Oh great, now Ass is here. You waited here for me? You just pushed your way into a gang headquarters so you could sit behind some boxes and ambush me? You really are an ass. He has nothing new. Neither do Jesse and James, aside from a lower sense of self-worth. The only worthwhile thing in this entire hideout is the Needle Queen that Giovanni's hiding. Well, moving on from that complete waste of time, let's go beat up some psychic trainers at the gym. We find ourselves a Slowbro and an Alakazam. Is that a level 50 Abra? Why would you do that? Before we move on, I get the HM for Fly. But I don't have a flying Pokemon. No worries, I'll just catch an ostrich. Oh look, it can learn fly. Yeah! Did that adult just try to steal a ten-year-old's bike? Might be a little small for you, dude. I mean, look at you. There's no way you're child size. Well, we're running out of places to visit, so let's make sure to hit up everywhere we haven't been before we finish this up. We swing over to the power plant, where we find ourselves a Lickitung, and also another terror bird! Oh god, we need to- oh. Oh hey! I actually hit something! I've reached my character arc! Well, if that's the case, then let's hit up the last gym. We see a Needle King and a Rhydon, but that's all. Giovanni's still a pushover, and all his trainers are just muscle men and guys with whips. Hey man, you got your thing, I dig it. Before we can take on the Elite Four, we have to deal with ass again. It's a slaughter. And then we make our way through some sort of mountain and cave. Why is the Elite Four hidden away like this? And why are- No, no, 
Lemon, we said we weren't going to do this anymore. Just let it go. Well, at least the mountain isn't a complete waste of time. We see a Charizard, a Golduck, Executor, Blastoise, Victory Bell, and... No, not again! Oh god, finally. I thought I'd never see the sun again. What's with all these statues? Did I enter the Dreamlands? What is all this? Well, wherever we are, they have a Pokemon Center, so that's good. Before we tackle the best of the best, we update our total count. Looks like we've only got 26 more Pokemon to go. The end is in sight. On to the Elite Four. They don't have that many unique Pokemon, to be honest. The only Pokemon Lorelei has is... Um, man, there must have been some real lawsuits about that one. Bruno has a Machamp, and Agatha has a Gengar. Thankfully, Lance is a treasure trove of rare Pokemon. He has a Gyarados, Dragonair, Aerodactyl, and Dragonite. Very nice. Last up is Ashat McGee. Let's see what he has for us today. Nothing. Nothing new. Way to mix it up, bud. So, after the game congratulates me on my victory and tells me to go get flashed by Oak's aid, we're done with the story. But there's definitely a few Pokemon out there for me to find still. 19, in fact. So we're not done yet. First things first, we buy a large supply of Aim Assist Ultra Balls from Indigo Plateau, then head on over to Mount Moon where we can catch another Clefairy, and force feed it a Moonstone to get Clefable. Next, we find ourselves a high-level Pidgeotto, Gloom, and Poliwhirl, since we need to evolve them naturally. We'll do that later. Next is a Psyduck, which we find floating around Vermilion City. Not quite sure how I missed that one. And moving on to the Safari Zone, where I spend far too long trying to fish up a Dratini, then roll around in the grass for even longer until I realize that I've been looking in the wrong section. I'm 10, give me a break. Eventually, I find the right patch of grass and see a Scyther and a Pinsir. I also realize I never went to Mount Silver. And after exploring that a bit, I find a ditto. I also bump into... Mew? Is that you? You're not Mew. You're just a genetic mistake. Meh. Whatever. Might as well catch it. After all that, I think it's time for some shopping. We go to Celadon, grab some evolution stones, then give them to our party, netting us a Vileplume and a Polyrath. Ten left, huh? Well, let's head on over to Cinnabar Island. There, we talk to that very strange scientist who gives us a Kabuto. After jamming a couple of rare candies into its mandibles, we swap train it a bit more to get it to evolve into Kabutops. Then do the same with Pidgeotto until it evolves into Pidgeot. God, what else is there? Porygon? Where's that at? Oh, it's in the game corner. Okay, how much does that cost? Oh, just the maximum amount of money. Cool. Well, time to gamble, I guess. This isn't worth it. I hate gambling in real life, let alone in a video game. Buy as many coins as I can so that I don't have to suffer for too long, then did some extracurricular research on how to count cards. I mean, pick the right slot machine. Turns out this one has better odds than the others, and that occasionally gets you a winning streak. And I mean occasionally. Collecting enough coins took me so long that I stopped recording to save disk space. After what felt like hours, but was probably more like hours, I got enough coins to buy a stupid Porygon. <coughs> that just leaves Venusaur. I still can't believe I didn't see one of these on any of the trainers I fought. I found all the other starter evolutions that way. So weird. Anywho, turns out there's a woman in Cerulean who will give me a Bulbasaur, but my Pikachu needs to love me enough before she'll hand it over. Alright, you cute little shit. Show her how much you love me. Not enough. You've been on my roster the entire game. That's hours upon hours of- Wait, do I have to actually use you? Alright, fine. More swap training it is. After boosting Pikachu to about level 30 or so, I run back to the lady in town who decides that I've tortured my Pikachu enough and that I deserve her Bulbasaur. Thanks. Needless to say, I force Bulbasaur to get swole, evolving it all the way to Ivysaur and then Venusaur. And that's it. That's as many Pokemon as I can get in a single game in Gen 1. Electabuzz and Magmar don't exist in this version, and I can't get Omastar unless I start completely over and pick the other fossil. Golem requires that you trade it for it to evolve, and Mew is yet to be discovered. Five short. Five! Don't give me that Pikachu, that's a bad thing. Well, I'm not done yet. That's just the first generation of Pokemon, and from what I hear, Pokemon from the older generations are in the next gens as well. Maybe if we play the next generation, we'll be able to find the ones we missed this time around. Besides, how many more new Pokemon can there be? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. This one took me a long time to make, not only because it was a collectathon, but also because when I started making this video, I was still learning how to edit and record videos properly. That's how long this one has been in the works. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm just glad it's finally done. I don't know when, but eventually I'll get around to continuing with Gen 2. Young Lemon always wanted to be a Pokemon Master, and damn it, we owe the little guy enough to at least try. 
If you're new here and liked what you saw, it would be a great help if you liked and subscribed to the channel. Don't forget to jump on our Discord so that you can vote for future challenge runs, and if you need other social medias, the links are in the description. Before we go, I just want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters, Lord Ham and Drum Smasher. Every bit helps get me a little closer to the goal of having a proper studio, and I can't thank you enough. Alright, that's all I've got. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all in the next video. I wanna be the very best that no one ever was.